Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, um, my name is uh, Nader Dabit. Um, I do work with AWS, and I specifically am working with AWS Mobile, which is like the mobile division. We do a lot of uh, SDKs and cloud computing for mobile, mobile devices and mobile apps. But what I'm talking about today actually has nothing to do with AWS. Um, this is going to be a talk on VR and AR, and we're going to be specifically talking about a framework or a, a toolkit or um, just uh, a, a suite of tools that comes from a company called Vero Media. And luckily, we actually have um, one of the founders here, Mr. Advani. He's sitting in the front row. So um, if you have any like serious questions, like go to him after that, not me, because you know he's the real uh, expert here. Um, I'd be happy to, to talk to you too. To, uh, I might actually go, you know, hang out with him after this talk. If anyone does have any questions, that way, if I don't know the answer, we can like throw them off to him. Um, so. With this presentation that I'm giving, um, my Twitter handle is, is at dabit3. What I would like for you to do, some of you, if you have your phones around and you're on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, take a picture of me. If it looks good, keep it. If it doesn't, delete it. Uh, then upload it to Twitter and tag me in it. I'm going to actually download a bunch of these photos, and we're going to be like looking at the app that I built for this conference using a lot of these images. So um, the more that we have, the better. Um, I'll, I'll probably be able to download like um, just a handful, but um, you know, if I have a bunch out there, that would be great. So um, I'm also dab at three on Medium and on GitHub. If you want to follow me, I do a lot of writing. Um, a few of the takeaways I'd really like you to think about as I'm giving this talk. Um, there's really um, a, a, a main main three concepts I think that if you can come away with this, you'll have a really good understanding about kind of how to build. AR, VR, at least kind of get started with it. And uh, those are understanding layouts, understanding the uh, Vero React API, and understanding why you might use Vero versus another um, like framework or library. So with layout, we're developers that have been building in two dimensions for, mo you know, for at least for me, most of my life. And we're always working on screens. We're always working along an X and a Y axis. And sometimes we might work with Z and X, but in reality, that's not really what we're thinking about for the most part. We're, we're really working uh, along the lines of margins and padding. With uh, React Native, you're working with Flexbox. Um, if you're like cutting edge on the web, you're working with CSS grids, I guess. Maybe using X and Y axis on the transforms. But when you're working with React and, um, I'm sorry, when you're working with uh, VR and AR, there's another uh, dimension, and it's the uh, Z index that you kind of like, that we've worked with in, in the web, but it's more like a Z axis. So instead of just worrying about laying something out top to bottom, left and right, you're also worrying about where to put that in, in, the, um, in the Z axis in space. So if I want to put something like um, here, and then um, like, you know, this height, I would guess you would say, and then like on the left, like the margin like would be zero looking from my, from my direction. We can actually push it forward with that z-axis, and we'll look at how to do that in just a second. Also, if you can um, think about how the Vero React API works or understand how it works after seeing this talk, um, that's kind of another thing I'd like to kind of get across. And then the last thing is like why you would try Vero versus using a, a, another framework. So right now is a really good time, I think, to get into like VR and AR. That's because we're getting to this point where we're seeing a lot of efficient um, ways to build AR and VR apps. Like when VR and AR first like came out, everyone was really excited about it, but there wasn't a lot of people that knew how to do it. And there wasn't a lot of easy ways to actually do that. So it was more excitement and less actual production. Now we're seeing, uh, seeing a maturation of, of different frameworks. We're actually seeing um, companies that are building successful AR and VR apps. Really what I'm focusing on today though is gonna be AR. And that's because um, when I'm showing these demos I'm gonna be going over, you really wanna kind of see the progression from a really basic implementation to something more complex. And if we switch from VR to AR and back and forth, you would kind of like, you know, maybe lose the train of thought. So I thought we would stick with one platform and kind of stick to that and see how we can build upon just an AR app. But the cool thing about Vero is that you're actually able to use the same APIs across virtual reality and augmented reality. So you can kind of learn most of this stuff and apply it to an AR, a VR environment as well. Um, also, the app that I built is an AR app. So you can download it at the end of the conference and look at it and hopefully understand what's like going on. 
It's probably, in my opinion, one of the better AR apps that's ever been built. Um, so when you download it and you look at it, and I, I demo it later, um, if you think like my three-year-old child wrote it, like you know, it's it's not really my fault. I'm not a good designer, but the um, you know, it, it does a little something for someone that's never built VR and AR before. Um, like it was really nice to be able to kind of like throw something something together. I actually wanted to release this to the App Store, but um, I, I, did, I did release it to the App Store a few times, but it keeps getting rejected for like a lot of different reasons. Um, I'm hoping to like finish getting all of the last things um, that they've asked for fixed maybe this week. If it, if it does, I'm gonna you know, tweet it out and stuff like that. But you can go ahead and download it um, off my GitHub repo. I'll, I'll kind of show you where that is later. Another reason that I like AR is because there's a lot more opportunity to actually like ship things in AR and a lot more consumers of AR. The AR devices are already like here, and everyone, pretty much everyone has either a device that you can use or you will be able to use um, or, or, or download and use AR apps. Um, a lot of people are talking about, and they always are kind of, this is always a discussion that you hear uh, around people that are like talking about the future. And they talk about what's the next platform, like what's gonna come after the phone? Is it gonna be the contact lens? Is it gonna be the watch? Is it gonna be something else? I think that's an interesting discussion, but I think the real question is how can we actually use the mobile device to add m new platforms to the actual device or to add m new and more functionality to the device? Because I don't think phones are going anywhere soon. I did a talk at uh, Chain React called JavaScript Futurism, and pretty much my main like consensus. There was a few different things, but in, uh, the main one that I kind of came away with after doing a lot of research and just my opinion, I think the mobile platform is here to stay for a, a while. I would say maybe at least another 10 years. So, you know, we have billions of people that are going to be coming online in, in some undeveloped countries over the next couple of years. Um, we don't have a way to build something that does all of these things that phones do, and we're not gonna be able to build something and get them in the hands of all these people anytime soon other than phones. And the phones are already here. So there are a lot of um, popular VR platforms out there. There's Oculus Rift, um, HTC Vive, there's the uh, Samsung Gear VR, I think it's what it's called. But the thing is, like, the people that buy those are like gamers, right? Or they're people that are like cutting edge technologists. They're not like your grandfather or your cousin. The cool thing about with AR is um, there's like, you know, everybody has a mobile device, but I think there's around, within about six months, there'll be 500 million people that are gonna be able to run an AR kit on their device um, with iOS 11. And then the following six months, there's gonna be around 1.5 billion people total once Android and um, AR Core is available for more, de more, more devices. So you don't have to sell 1.5 billion devices to get people into this new application paradigm. They're already there with their phones. So building AR, you just have more um, potential customers. And I mentioned Oculus earlier, and I'll use Facebook as a, um, an example, I guess, because they're investing in both VR and AR. Um, Zuck said at the last F8 conference something like uh, that goes, this is actually his exact quote, we're gonna make the camera the uh, first mainstream AR platform. And they released something called the Camera Effects Platform. And I haven't really seen a lot about this until I was doing this research and I started looking into it. It's pretty interesting. Um, and basically allows you to use the Facebook, um, th this, this platform to kind of do stuff like you see on Instagram and Snapchat with the, the special effects and stuff pretty easily. Um, and they've even released something called AR Studio, which allows you to add these filters to not only the camera for like pictures, but also for live broadcasts. So you can do videos and stuff like that. Um, so Facebook is also not only betting heavily on VR with the Oculus, they're actually doubling down on AR with this stuff. And that's just an example of like a big company that also agrees, with, I think, with what I'm kind of saying there. So again, with the launch of ARKit and the adoption of iOS 11, you know, we're gonna see so many more people coming on with uh, iOS, and then the same thing with AR Core um, once, once that's more widely uh, uh, downloaded and available. 
And um, we've already seen successful apps built with AR. You know, we've seen Pokemon Go and Snapchat and all that stuff. So, again, we're going to be focusing on Vero React, but there's a couple of other ways you can build VR and AR. These are kind of the main ones that I, I, would, I would say that are options if you're working with React. There's React VR, which is web, and then there's React Native AR Kit, but that kind of limits you to iOS. The cool thing about React Vero, or Vero React, is that you can actually target both iOS and Android with a single code base for the most part. You know, similar to how with React Native, you have a few things here and there, but in general, you have a single code, uh, single code base. So Vero, they're the creator of Vero React and Vero Core. And this is kind of like off their website. Um, they're platforms for developers to build immersive augmented reality and virtual reality applications. And there's two pieces to Vero that you can use. There's Vero Core, which is Android, and they bill it as kind of like a scene kit for Android developers. And then there's Vero React, and that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, looking at. So. With AR, you can target, or you can build with AR Kit, or when you're working with VR Media, you're working with AR Kit on iOS and AR Core on Android. And for VR, you have Daydream, Gear VR, and Google Cardboard. So you can target all of this stuff with, uh, with what we're going to look at today. And Vero React, um, they have like a, a cool demo app that I'm going to show, and then I'm going to show my app at the end of the presentation. This app is kind of in the in the uh, App Store, so. Let's see here if I can transition to this screen. So let me see if I can switch off my display real quick. Sorry, this is kind of not perfect like I'd, I would have liked, but anyway. Um, so this is uh, the Figment app. This is uh, built with um, this is built with Vero. So you have um, just a few different things that you can kind of like do. You can do uh, animated objects, and you see this. Uh, you see how. There's good like lighting where you can kind of see like that there's an actual like maybe light with shadows and stuff. You see the shadow on the ground. So if you look at this one over here, it actually looks like he is um, he's like standing right there. It's really it's pretty good quality you know stuff, which is cool for it to be React Native. And then there's this uh, concept of portals. You've probably seen these too, where you have like I'm not gonna be able to like really walk into this, but you have these portals. So if we walked in there and looked around, it would be like you know. You were like in another space, and you turn around, and then you see like this space. Um, the app that I'm going to show off isn't as cool as this one, but this is a cool app if you want to kind of play around with some of the stuff that you can do on Vero. So let me see if I can switch back to my correct display. All right, cool. It didn't break. Um, so to, to properly run VR and AR, you need a, you need a powerful uh, renderer for good performance. And the cool thing about Vero, it does have a native render that runs using React Native. So you're, you're running native code when you're running uh, your, your application. Um, they support physically based rendering and high dynamic range rendering. Um, it, gives you an, uh, it gives you a way to do real time lighting and real time shadows. Um, you can add real-world mechanics and objects. It has its own physics engine. And you can even use a part, uh, the particle system to add things like fire, smoke, and, and cool special effects like that. Um, so when you're building an AR app, you have, or when you're building AR in general, there's two main components. You need a tracking engine, and you need a uh, rendering engine. 
So with the tracking engine, um, it's something that can basically understand the world around you and also kind of understand where you currently are in relation to the environment. So not only do you have to kind of see what's going on around you, but you have to understand, it basically needs to understand like where you currently are compared to, to everything else. And that includes things like elevation, lighting, and stuff like that. So the good thing is that the iPhone is actually strong enough to be this tracking device. And it does that using the camera and like the motion detector that's built into the phone. And for, uh, for iOS, the tracking engine is ARKit, and for Android, it's ARCore. And for the rendering engine, um, you basically need, to way, uh, need a way to render to, to your UI. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. There's uh, SceneKit, which is iOS-based, so it's not cross-platform. Unity Unreal, which are really, really great and really powerful, but they're kind of like another thing to learn. We're React developers. The great thing about Vero or something like that, at least, um, is that you can like jump right in and start doing stuff right away. And then there's, um, um, yeah, so Unity Unreal, we, we went over both of those. So kind of like jumping right in with React, Vero would be probably you know, a good choice to, to try that out. So we talked about this concept of X and Y axis. When we're working with CSS or styling, that might look something like this, like giving it a margin, giving it um, some layout using Flexbox or whatever. So let's look at how to lay things out in a, in a three-dimensional space. So we have the X and the Y axis. Like now they're kind of, they look like they're kind of like going down and to the right, but kind of turn that around and then imagine this, this Y axis is a true Y axis, and then imagine that Z axis. And the way that we're going to use those dimensions when we're working with layouts is we're going to be passing in an array of positions. So the position array comes in the order of x, y, z. So the x is the x-axis, y, y-axis, and of course z is the z-axis. So when you want to uh, position something using um, Vero, you basically just pass in an array of positions. And this can be static or dynamic. So if you have um, your user Inter interfacing with the uh, item on the screen, you can actually dynamically change that by you know, calling methods and stuff like that. So let's look at how to get started with uh, a new app. Um, with, with Vero, you do have to like, get an API key. So you go to their website, get an a API key, and then the uh, easiest way to get started after that is to use their CLI. It works a lot like the React Native CLI, npm install dash g, and then you do React Vero init and then you're ready to go. As long as you already are able to run Xcode and stuff like that, you should be good to go here. And also, I think you have to have React Native installed. Um, and then as far as building and testing, there's a couple of different ways to go about this. Uh, you can run it directly on your device. You cannot run it on a simulator. You do have to, of course, run it on your device. But the cool thing is you can actually download this uh, Vero Media Testbed. And it's uh, an app that you get from the App Store. And you develop on your machine. And then it gives you like a URL. And it reminds me a lot of Expo, to where you just save it on your machine and you refresh on your phone and you're able to do it that way. So that's kind of a cool way to, to get started developing you know, quickly without having to do a lot of stuff. So let's take a look at the API. Well, we looked at the position property, the API just looks like any other React Native API. You import from Vero, React Vero, and you're kind of there, ready to go. And there's dozens or even more of that, of components that you can use. Um, and let's now transition to looking at how to, to build like a Hello World app. We're going to start by building something that just renders some text. Then we're going to add like a 3D box. Then we're going to actually add a real 3D object that takes lighting and shadows and all that stuff. And then we're just going to continue adding and implementing new features to that object. Um, and then at the end, we'll add animations. And then finally, I'll demo my um, awesome app. Um, so this is a Hello World scene that you might build, just something really basic. Um, you can kind of map a Vero AR scene to kind of a view with, uh, with React Native. And then Vero text would be like text. Um, there is something that you can also do to kind of get an idea when the camera recognizes the, the current position that it's in, and it's called the on tracking updated method. And any time that, so when you first load your app, this, this method's going to be called, and it basically means the, the, I guess, space that you're currently in is recognized, and you can start rendering things to your environment. And then you can you know, use that method to do stuff. And then if you, if you move around any, in anything a significant way, that, that might reset. 
Um, so let's look at how this might look in an app. Whoops. Let's see if I can actually. I may need to go back to. Oh, there it goes. So this is me in my office back in Mississippi. I apologize for how ugly my office is. But um, that's just a really basic text. That's like nothing too special. But it just shows you kind of um, what that would look like, I guess you'd say, for that Hello World app. That's, you know, this app here. Um, so what if we wanted to add um, something else to the actual scene, something that's actually 3D? We're gonna import 3D uh, Vero box, and we're gonna import Vero materials. And the box basically takes um, a similar array of props or a similar uh, type of props where we give it a, a position. And then the interesting thing here that's a little different is we're passing in this materials property. And then after the class declaration, we call Vero materials and we call create materials and we're giving it a property of grid, and then we're giving it a diffuse texture. There are about a dozen different properties you can add to your, to your um, texture. Um, here, we're just giving it an image, so we wanna basically wrap this, this box in an image on every single corner. And that's all that's kind of really doing. So let's see if I can get this to play. There we go. So there's our image. You can walk around, look you know, left and right. It's, it's pretty cool, but it doesn't really, it doesn't impress me that much. It does a little something. It, it's, I could have gotten a better picture, I think, but you know, that works for now. Um, so for a 3D object, this is when it gets a little more interesting. Because if you look at me, I'm standing here, it would be hard to represent me truly in a web application in a 3D way because we have things to take into consideration, like lighting, my height, if this, this is in front of me, so um, you, know, you can't see my legs. Um, and and we've, we really wanted to make that look real. We, we could do that with a picture, but it wouldn't truly be 3D, right? So with a 3D object, you can actually make like real people and stuff like that. So um, one of the, the most, I guess uh, the toughest things for me when working with all this stuff was understanding how 3D images work because I'm not a designer and even if I was, like the people that built some of this, these 3D images, they do a really awesome job. But you also kind of under, have to understand textures and like how that works in, all, in that entire space. And that was kind of challenging for me. There's, there's some good documentation within Vero on how to do that. But the easiest way is to actually just go and buy some existing images, um, existing objects and use those. Anyway, let's take a quick look at how, how that works. Um, here we have not only the uh, Vero 3D object, but we've imported also the ambient light and the spotlight. The ambient light is almost like if you were in a room and there was equal lighting across the entire top of, uh, of the room, it just gives an over, um, overview light of everything in the room. And then there's a spotlight. And the spotlight is kind of like you know a real spotlight. It just shines directly somewhere, so you get um, kind of an idea of where that, that item is in, the, in that space. So we, we're gonna use both of these to kind of render out a 3D object. And this is something I downloaded for free. Um, it's a, a dinosaur. And you can see its head has like a little bit of like light and you can see the shadows on its eyes and stuff like that. Um, but it still doesn't look like that great, so let's, let's try to improve that dinosaur a little bit. Um, a couple of different places that you can get these assets. One of them is Turbo Squid. That was the first place I went. It's okay. There's some free stuff you can download from there. But actually, I was talking to uh, Vladimir a few, a, a few days ago, and he was telling me he does a lot of this stuff actually within his company. And um, he mentioned the Unity Asset Store, and I actually checked it out, and it's really cool. You can download these whole packs of, of 3D objects for fairly cheap. So if you want to play around with this, I would say go there to buy stuff. Um, so what we want to do now, though, is we want to actually, we don't want to just throw that dinosaur in the room. We want to actually make him look like he's somewhere. And the way that you kind of, one of the ways you can do that, I guess you would say, is using a plane. And there's two different ways to, to recognize a plane in, in, in this framework. There's Vero plane and Vero plane selector. And they both do kind of the same things. The Vero plane will automatically recognize a plane, and then the selector actually lets the user um, 
it gives them an idea of all the different planes that are available, and then you can like choose the plane and then lay the object automatically on that plane, given the coordinates that are given to that object. So I'm using the, the plane selector because I want to show that the plane is there, and then we're going to actually lay the object there. So let's add a dinosaur to our plane. So this is kind of how it would look. We're giving um, the Vera uh, 3D object just a wrapper, and the wrapper is the plane selector. So there's our plane. Um, if you, when you start the app, it, it'll recognize the planes, and as you move around, they get larger. So now we have the dinosaur kind of like on that physical space. It's getting better, but it's still not where it needs to be, though. We don't really know for sure that that dinosaur is there. Um, we need to improve the way that looks. And the, one of the best ways and the more realistic ways to do that is to add shadows. So let's do that. And to do that, we're going to import the Vero surface. And we're going to give this uh, all these items that we've already used. We're going to add a few more props. One of the main ones that we're going to be looking at is the, I forgot the name of it, the influence bit mask. And we're actually going to map the, the, the bit mask between the object, the surface, and the, and the actual spotlight. Because we want to make sure that if that item moves, that um, all of the other items that are affecting that object understand kind of what's going on there. So the only extra item we've imported is the surface. The surface is going to be the shadow. And then we're um, basically updating our object and our spotlight to add a few more um, properties there to kind of get, make everything work together right. So now the dinosaur kind of looks a little better. It's, it seems like it's actually, you know, my room, my room is so small, though, unfortunately. But, um, you know, if that was a larger room or if the dinosaur was a little smaller, it might look a little better. But he's there, and we get a better idea that he's actually there, right? He's not just floating around somewhere. Um, we can also add animations pretty easily. The API is familiar if you've used, um, like, the animated API on React because we're giving things like um, a rotate, uh, a rotate um, coordinates. So we're saying rotate 90 degrees. And we're going to do that um, every 90 seconds. And I think I left off on the rotate. It needs to be plus equals because we're going to rotate 90 and keep adding that so it stays rotating. Um, and then we're going to give it a duration. So we want the rotation to happen in 250 milliseconds. So now we have the dinosaurs like spinning around. It's cool. Um, and again, you know, from someone that's never done VR or AR, getting this stuff up and running was pretty easily done and pretty quickly. And all this stuff is kind of like well documented. Um, there's also a way to interact with the components. So really, you don't want to just have things there. You want to be able to touch things. So there's all types of methods that you can trigger on touch. Um, you, can do, uh, you can drag things around. Um, and basically, when you touch something, you have a, um, an on-drag method. And the on-drag method passes the x, y, and z coordinates. So you can then reset that coordinate for the component that you're working with. So if you have the object in x, y, z space, you can then kind of adjust that as the user is moving it, their, their finger around. So, so now I'm going to demo my app, because I think I'm running close on time, and I'm actually done anyway. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch out with my slides again. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually go to Twitter and download a few pictures. So let's go there. Let's see if my Wi-Fi is going to work here. Let me try turning my network off. Let's see if I can get regular Wi Fi. There we go. Thank you. I'm Raphael. <laughs> um, 
Let me go ahead and save this one. Oops. Cohen, thank you. All right, and Omar, I appreciate that, man. All right, so that's three images. That's cool for now. Let's, uh, let's open the app. So this is it, um, this one on the bottom left corner, the Amsterdam AR. Make sure I don't have it running. I do. Go ahead and close that. So this is it right here. There's, uh, I'm using React Navigation to kind of have a tab navigator. So we have on the left-hand side um, a way to add a new image. We're going to be like going into the camera roll, camera roll, grabbing an image, uploading it to an S3 bucket, and then we're going to render those images within an uh, augmented reality space. So right now, we have a few pictures from my trip so far. There's me and Richard. Um, Ken is around here somewhere. Who's that? Yeah? Oh, <laughs> okay, cool. So, okay, it's working. Let's go ahead and add these new images. It takes, it takes a little bit, sorry. We add one more. And like my original idea behind this app was like everyone was going to be at the conference taking pictures of each other and we were going to all upload them and we were going to walk around and see our pictures and it was going to be a great time. But because you can't download from the app store, that never happened. But if you do want to download this app on my GitHub repo and then do that, we can still do that. Um, the problem is right now my authentication system isn't implemented yet, so there's no sign in, so I don't know who uploaded what. So if you upload something explicit, I'm going to have to delete it. <laughs> If you see something bad, tell me. Okay, cool. So, um, okay, the, that should be three images. So now let's go back and see if those, uh, those images are there. We should kind of like see the new ones somewhere. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's, I think, no, I did that one earlier. It's hard for me to tell. No, okay. <laughs> let, me ref let me just close this and open it back up, maybe. It should be pulling the bucket to get the new images, but something probably isn't working. Is that one? Yeah, cool. That works. <laughs> Um, and that, that's actually the end of my talk. Um, so I'm on Twitter at Dabit3, but I also run a podcast, and um, a lot of people are on the podcast with me. We run it together. It's called React Native Radio. If you're interested in React Native, uh, download our podcast app, our episodes, and listen to them. We have a lot of cool stuff. We actually have an episode on Vero, if you're interested in that. So thank you.